This talk is an overview of sedative hypnotic medications. For this talk, I drew significantly from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine's 2017 Clinical Practice Guideline. Before getting into the talk, I'd like to give a brief foreword about insomnia terminology. There are three general categories of insomnia. Early insomnia, which refers to problems with sleep onset or having difficulty falling asleep. Middle insomnia, referring to problems with sleep maintenance or waking up in the middle of the night. And late insomnia, or problems with early awakening, for example, consistently waking up before your alarm. In general, meds for insomnia will target one or both of early and middle insomnia. Now, let's move on to the sedative hypnotics. I'll start by outlining the meds recommended to the American Academy of Sleep Medicine's guideline, then move on to additional meds often used for insomnia. As mentioned before, these meds are distinguished by whether they are helpful for sleep onset or sleep maintenance, and whether they have a hangover effect, meaning sedation in the early morning after taking the med. Generally, sedative hypnotics with a short half-life are used only for sleep onset and do not lead to a hangover. The melatonin agonist Romeltion is useful for sleep onset, has no hangover, and is generally well tolerated. This is a great first-line choice for sleep onset insomnia. The orexin antagonist Suvorexant is preferred for sleep maintenance, but has a hangover and, due to its addictive qualities, is a controlled substance and should be avoided in patients with substance use disorders. The tricyclic antidepressant doxepin is useful for sleep maintenance and usually does not have a hangover. However, beware the usual tricyclic side effects, including anticholinergic side effects. Next are the benzodiazepine receptor agonists, also known as the Z drugs. Though they are not strictly benzos, they are mechanistically similar and have similar risks of dependence, withdrawal, and falls or cognitive dysfunction, particularly in geriatric patients. Of these meds, Two are used for sleep onset, zaloplan and immediate release zolpidem, and two are used for both sleep onset and sleep maintenance, extended release zolpidem and isopaclone. Finally, there are two benzos specifically indicated for insomnia, triazolam and temazepam. Be mindful of the usual risks associated with benzos when choosing these options. These are all of the sedative hypnotics recommended by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. Next, I'd like to present some mnemonics to help you remember which of these medications are indicated for which kind of insomnia. Using the framework established earlier of early, middle, and late insomnia, Zaloplan, Rimeltion, and Triazolam are used exclusively for sleep onset, which you can remember with ZART, which rhymes with START. That is, they are used to start sleeping. Suvorexant and Doxepin, or Pseudo, are used exclusively for sleep maintenance. Finally, Zolpidem, Isopaclone, and Temazepam, or Zest, are used for both sleep onset and maintenance. With these meds, when you're getting good sleep, you'll have a new Zest for life. Let's briefly go over some other sedative hypnotic options that aren't preferred by the AASM, but may still be useful in some cases. Melatonin is an over-the-counter supplement that is well tolerated, but it is not regulated by the FDA, so doses and formulations are not standardized. Diphenhydramine is an over-the-counter antihistamine commonly used for allergy relief, but can also produce sedation. Two of the atypical antidepressants, trazodone and mirtazapine, are sedating at the low doses indicated here. They may be particularly useful in treating patients with comorbid depression and insomnia. Quetiapine is a highly sedating second-generation antipsychotic, so can be useful in patients with comorbid psychosis and insomnia. Finally are GABAergic meds, such as gabapentin which have secondary indications for anxiety, pain, and restless leg syndrome. I want to conclude by outlining two important principles in insomnia management. First, the first-line treatment for insomnia is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia, or CBTI. Make sure to consider non-medication treatment strategies, such as sleep restriction, stimulus control, and overall sleep hygiene, before using the sedative hypnotics. Second. Sedative hypnotics should ideally be used short-term to re-establish circadian rhythm, not every night. Unfortunately, it is easy for patients to become dependent on sleep medication without taking steps to change their thoughts and behaviors around sleep. So be proactive in coaching your patients on appropriate use of sleep medication. That's the end of this talk. In my opinion, sleep is one of the three core components of physical and mental well-being, the other two being diet and exercise, so it is important for psychiatrists to become well-versed in the management of insomnia. Thank you.